right, welcome to, I guess what I could call a primer on Adobe Illustrator. Now these videos, I'm gonna do a series of three of them, are just a basic walkthrough of what the Adobe Illustrator program is all about and what it's used for and what you can do with it. So I have Adobe Illustrator's open screen right here. And first thing you wanna do, as I always mention, is window, workspace and you'll notice you have essentials and essentials classic the difference between these two is essentials is the workspace that i would recommend if you have used adobe illustrator for years and you kind of feel really comfortable and you know where everything's at i usually do not use this okay it also limits some of your choices and some of your options that are right there on the screen so I always recommend you use Essentials Classic. That's the older version, the classic version of the way Illustrator laid things out on the screen. So I do this regardless of what class I'm teaching. I use this myself, even though I've been working in Illustrator for over 20 years, I go with Essentials Classic. Okay, and what that's going to do is just kind of throw out your panels according to the last time you used Adobe Illustrator. I was separating my layers, mixing some colors, and using my Pathfinder. So once you set Essentials Classic, go to Window Menu again, Workspace again, and Reset Essentials Classic. That's going to put all your panels back where they belong over here on the right. That's also gonna put them in what's called icon view. So unless you have used Illustrator for years and you know what these icons stand for, you're not gonna really know what's going on here. Okay, the other thing Illustrator is gonna do is it's gonna put your properties panel and your libraries panel over here. They're big. And 95% of the time, if you're working in my class, you're not going to be using properties or libraries. So what I would recommend is you click the double arrowhead to close those. Then click this double arrowhead to expand your most commonly used panels. Now what I would recommend, and this kind of, uh, kind of sucks in all the programs, is your layers panel kind of gets buried down here at the bottom. And you're going to use layers a lot. So I would pull that layers panel out. That also allows you to go to the bottom and stretch it out a little bit more. Okay, the other thing I would do is instead of a one column toolbox, click the double arrowhead and go to a shorter two column toolbox. I've already done a video on setting up your preferences. So I'm not going to do that again. You should have watched that before you're in this one. So what I'm going to do here in Illustrator is go to File and New. And I'm just going to set up a file for print, your typical page sizes. Okay, I'll go with a simple 8.5 by 11 or letter size sheet of paper. Over here on the right, I'm going to set my measurements from points to inches. So I know that's 8.5 inches by 11 inches. And I want it to be a vertical sheet of paper. So I'll click create. And this is what Illustrator is always going to start with, just a blank page or what they call an artboard. Okay, I'm going to hold my space bar. You can see I'm on my zoom tool right now, but regardless of what tool you're on, you can always hold your space bar to activate your hand tool and that can pull images around. So I can push it off to the side a little bit. That leaves me a little more room to mess around with my layers panel. And right over here, you have a black arrow and a white arrow. Okay, what I also refer to as the solid arrow and the hollow arrow. Okay, we're gonna come to those in a minute, but what I wanna do, you can't really use those unless you have something drawn on the page. So right down here are your geometric tools. Okay, if you press and hold for a second or two, you have all these geometry tools. So I'm gonna run through them really quick. Now the other thing is before I go to draw, I'm just gonna start with the rectangle. There are a couple things that I would suggest you turn off. Okay, those are under your view menu. There is a thing called a bounding box. 
I'm gonna leave this on for right now, but I wanna show you why I would choose to hide it in just a minute. But what I recommend is under your view menu, before you start drawing, turn off your smart guides. Those are measurement guides that help you to line things up. And we're just kind of freehanding stuff, so we don't really need to be that precise with smart guides. So turn off smart guides. The other thing that works with smart guides is view menu, snap to point. Those two are usually turned on together. So I always tell my students, when you go to your view menu, there should be no check marks at the bottom here. No check marks indicates I'm ready to draw. Okay, so with your geometric tools, you can click and drag you can hold your shift key, which means perfect. You'll get a perfect square. The width and the height will be the same. Or if you want a specific dimension, you just click. And then you can type in a, let's say, a 3-inch by 3-inch square. And there we go. Okay. If you draw a bunch of stuff here and you're making a mess, you just keep dragging and dragging and dragging like this. You know, they just keep covering each other up over and over and over again. Command A for select all or control A on a PC and just hit your delete or backspace key on a PC. Okay, so try a few, command A and delete them. You can also hold your option key or alt on a PC and that allows you to draw from the center of the object like this. It all goes out from the center when you hold your option key. Okay, so I'm going to hit delete on that. Press and hold. You've got a rounded rectangle. So if I click and drag, I can hit the down arrow key and you can see my corners are not so round click and drag and while I hold down the mouse I hit the up arrow key and you can see I'm getting rounder and rounder like a big pill or you click and you can type this in the width will be five inches let's say the height is two inches and I want every corner radius to be 0.5 half an inch and I can design the object now keep in mind again command a delete Option key allows you to draw from the center if you wanted to. And I'll delete that. Now here's why I don't like the bounding box. I'm going to go to the ellipse tool. Okay, If I wanted to draw a circle from the center, circle means I'm going to hold my shift key and center means also my option key. So shift and option. And now I can draw a perfect circle from the center. Okay, when you do that, you always let go of your mouse first, then you let go of the keyboard. And this box around the circle is a bounding box. Okay, if I go to my black arrow, this bounding box is going to stay on my screen. If I go to my white arrow, it's going to disappear. Okay, and I want to show you what the bounding box is used for. Your bounding box is a transformation tool. So I always tell people in my class, if you're working with a circle, work with a circle, not a circle inside a box. Okay, if I tried to pull the top point, I'm going to stretch this into an ellipse. Or if I pull this, I'm going to distort it. And if I pull the side, I will distort it. So the bounding box is a transformation tool. And half the time, you're not going to be transforming things. Like you can see here, it's not a perfect circle anymore. Okay, so I go to View menu, and I hide the bounding box. I only use it when I need it. Okay, when you do need to transform things, this is your free transform tool. This is your bounding box. You activate it when you need it. So when I click, there it is. I can shrink this down, pull the bottom edge back up, get something close to a circle again, and there we go. But when I take my black arrow and click outside, I don't need it anymore. Okay, so with the black arrow, I'm going to just hit Command-A, select all, 
and delete. And I'm going to draw another circle. Okay, I'm going to start in the middle, shift key and option key, and draw from the center. Again, I let go of the mouse first, then my keyboard. And you'll notice with your black arrow, solid arrow, all your points are now solid. If I click outside, they disappear. If I either click on the edge, they're activated, or if I click and drag and hit the object, solid points are activated. So now if I took my black arrow and tried to pull the bottom point, all the points are going to move. Okay, solid arrow activates solid anchor points and solid anchor points can be moved. Okay, keep it that, keep that in mind, keep it that way. Solid arrow, solid anchor points. I'm going to click outside and go to the white or hollow arrow. Notice when I click and drag, I get a totally different look. I've got these little lines here called direction lines. Anything attached to a curve is manipulated with these direction lines. Okay, hollow arrow activates hollow anchor points. So if I were to just click on the bottom one, notice only the bottom one is solid. These are still all hollow anchor points. Solid points are the ones that can be moved. Okay, so your white arrow, your hollow arrow is your editing tool. It allows you to pull objects apart. So I can pull one anchor point. I can click on this little segment between the top and the side and I can pull these direction lines to bend the edges. I can click on this section, pull this direction line up and totally warp that circle into this kind of little S curve here. So you can see things are very bendable and flexible here in Adobe Illustrator. Okay, if I wanted to move this up to the corner, I can't do it with my white arrow because that'll just pull it apart. So if I make a mistake, it's edit, undo, or command Z. If I wanted to move the whole thing, it's my black arrow. Click, and now I can move it. Okay, and notice I can click inside the object because there is white paint filling this object. You can see it right there. If I select the object and I can see the anchor points, this object is active. Active objects, you can manipulate and edit. So if I select it and I'm on my white fill, I can go to my swatches and change it to a yellow fill. If I click on the black stroke, kind of tucked underneath right there, if I'm on the black stroke, that is the black outline and I can change it to red. Now you're not gonna see that outline very well because it's a very thin, it's a one point stroke. So right up here is a shortcut to my stroke panel. I can go to the up arrow and keep hitting the up arrow and thicken up the outline or the stroke around this object. Okay, and I'm using the swatches panel to show you some of these colors. So again, if I click on the fill and it comes up to the top, I can change the fill to blue or to orange or to brown or to green. You have solid colors on your swatches panel. You have gradients, oops, gradients or blends of colors. And you have patterns. Colors, gradients, and patterns are stored on your swatches panel. If I click on the stroke, I can do the same thing. Strokes can be a color, strokes can have a gradient, and strokes can also have a pattern. Of course, that makes your object a little more difficult to see, but you can apply all three, colors, gradients, and patterns to strokes, colors, gradients, and patterns to fills. If I'm done experimenting, I can just hit the letter D for default colors. And this switches back to an object filled with white paint and has a thin one point stroke around it. 
that's your default. I'm going to hit delete and I'll show you a couple more of the geometric tools. So you also have a polygon tool. Polygons start from their center automatically. You don't have to hold the option key. You just click and drag. So I'll click and drag and as I hold down the mouse, I can resize this. I can rotate it. But once you let go of the mouse, you're kind of done. Okay, so if you don't like what that did, you have to delete and do it again. I'm going to click and drag. If I don't want it to kind of wobble around, I can hold my shift key. Now you can see the base is nice and flat by holding shift. And shift means perfect. So the base is perfectly flat. If I let go of the shift key, I can keep rotating and resizing. And as you hold down the mouse, okay, always hold down the mouse, you can hit the up arrow to add more sides or hit the down arrow to keep subtracting the amount of sides. Because you don't have a triangle tool in Illustrator, but you can draw a three-sided polygon like this. Now again, that's going to kind of wobble around. So if I hold my shift key, I keep the base nice and straight. Okay. This polygon is also going to remember that shape. So if I hit delete and I want to go back to a hexagon, it's not going to do that. It's going to keep drawing my triangle because that's the last thing that I drew. So I got to hit the up arrow and there's my hexagon. There's my octagon. Hold my shift key. I can click on the fill. And there's your stop sign. Okay, so I'll delete that. In addition, you'll notice I keep on having to go here and press and hold down. The other thing you should know is if you're going to be experimenting with all these tools here, instead of constantly coming back and clicking and pressing, you go to this vertical bar over here on the right. It's called a tear off. And when I let go of the, my, my mouse, I can tear off those tools from the toolbox. So I don't have to keep going over there. Okay, here's my star tool. Now keep in mind, since this is set to red, if I draw, it's automatically going to fill with red. It will fill with whatever color is active on your toolbox. So if I hit delete, and just hit the letter D for default colors. What I'm about to draw is a white object with a thin black stroke. So just like the polygon um, stars, they start from their center. So I'll click and drag. And like the polygon, you can rotate them. You can resize them. You can hold your shift key. And the base or the feet on that star will be nice and straight. But as you hold down your mouse, you can hit the up arrow to add more and more points like I am doing here. Okay. Hit the down arrow and you can subtract some of that points or some of those points. And the other thing that's really fun to play with is as I am holding down my mouse, again, when I let go, I'm kind of done. So if I don't like that, I got to hit delete. If I click and drag and hold down the mouse, I can also hold my command key on my Mac. I think it's control on your PC. I'm not sure because I don't use a PC, but on a Mac, it's your command key. And now I can shorten the arms of the star or lengthen the arms. So if I went with really short arms right here, I let go of just the command key, not my mouse. And now I start hitting the up arrow key a bunch of times here, like that. Hold down the command key. You can see I can make really long arms or very short arms like that. Fill that red. And now I have Hot Wheels or Barbie Mattel, the Mattel logo. Click on it, make it red or brown. Now you have Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. But you get the idea. You can have multiple points. So if I wanted to delete that and go back to the original star, 
I would hit D for default colors, go to my star tool or right here on the tear off, click and drag, hit the down arrow key a bunch of times, keep hitting that, keep hitting that, hold my command key and stretch out the arms a little bit more, hit the down arrow key, and I'm pretty much right back where I started with my five pointed star. Okay, keep in mind you can also just click and type in the measurements. Radius one is from the center to the outer points. Radius two is from the center to the inner points. And obviously the number of points. Okay, so radius one would go from here all the way out to the outer points. Radius two is from the center to the inner points. So if I don't want to keep hitting my up arrow a bunch of times, I could click, type 30, and there's my star. Okay, if I don't like how long those arms are, that's too bad. I got to delete it and draw it again. So here's the other thing that people mess up all the time when they use the star. And that is you cannot hold command key right when you go to draw because then you're going to get this. Okay, and it won't even look like a star. It'll look like that. Okay, that's because I collapsed it or made super long pointy arms. So I get that every semester in class. When I show people the command key, they hold it too soon, and then they get all of these. They don't get stars anymore. And they call me over and say, what did I do? Okay, so I'm gonna hit command A for select all and delete those and I instantly through using this over years and years I know what they did so here's how you fix it you have to click and drag a big star hold command come back toward the center and right before you get to the center you let go of command key drag your mouse out again hold command and come back in let go of your mouse again or your command key. There you go. So you got to rework the length of those arms. It can be done. It's just a little tricky. Now I hit the down arrow a bunch of times. There we go. And hold my command key. And there is my five pointed star. Very flexible, very fun to play with. So again, keep in mind your black arrow one more time. I can take that top point, it'll move every point because the black arrow activates solid points. But if I click outside and then take my white arrow, I can move just that point, like that. So you can reshape anything with your white arrow, move anything with your black arrow. Now here's the other thing about the black arrow, okay? If this object is filled with color, I can start anywhere with the black arrow, click on the color and move it by the color. Okay, this is where it gets tricky. If there is no color in here, I'm going to click on the yellow and hit the red slash key. None, no color. I cannot move from the color. There is no color here. So when you draw an object with no color in it, you got to click on the edge. Okay, sometimes you got to go really slow and kind of get it right on the edge. So here's a telltale sign that you're on the edge. When you see your arrow just by itself, you're not doing anything. Okay, when you hover over the edge, you will see a dot or a little anchor indicator show up next to your arrow. That means you are on the edge. That's basically Illustrator's way of saying, yes, you can now click to select your object. If you hover right over the corner, you're gonna get a white anchor point next to your arrow. That is telling you you're on an anchor point. If you see a solid, you're on the edge of the object. Okay, so just keep that in mind. If you don't wanna keep trying to go right on the edge, just click and drag and hit it. But again, you gotta be on the edge or on a point to move it. You can't click and drag from here. See, it won't do anything. You gotta select, go on an edge, and then drag. 
and that's if there is no color on the object. Okay, here's another great shortcut you're going to use all the time. If I fill an object and now I decide I don't want any color in that object, I click on the fill and on my keyboard, I hit the question mark key. Your question mark key is your slash key and that is like hitting your red slash right there. There's no more fill. Okay, if I fill this, let's say orange, and I come up here to my stroke and I give it a thicker outline here. Notice this object is filled with orange. It has a black stroke around it. And you have this little curved arrow. So you can switch those from an orange fill with a black outline, click, to a black fill with an orange outline. Okay, the other keyboard shortcut you're going to want to know is hitting the letter X. X will bring the fill to the top, so I can fill it red. X then brings the stroke to the top, so I can change it to black. If you hit Shift key and X, that's like hitting the curved arrow. Shift X, red fill, black outline. Shift X black fill, red outline, or just the letter X to see the stroke, hit X for the fill, hit X for the stroke, hit X for the fill. You get the idea. So I'm going to delete that. And the other thing you want to know about is your stroke panel. Really, really important. So I'm going to go with my uh, star tool once more. I'm just going to hit D for default colors and drag a star. And right up here, I'm going to give that star a really thick outline. So I'm going to hit the up arrow. Maybe I'll make it about 16. And then I come over to the stroke. And what I would recommend for the stroke panel is you pull this out. Okay, by default, your stroke panel is going to be very small. It's kind of compacted. So I'd recommend you hit the upper right corner pop-up menu and go to show options. There's the stroke panel. Okay, so I want to show you what's happening here. In addition to a star, I'm going to take my black arrow, click outside to deselect it. And I don't need these tear-offs anymore, so I can hit the X and close that. If I draw an object, it can have a fill. But if I just wanted to draw a line, a line is the black line. So I don't need a fill to just draw a simple line. So what I'm going to do is click on the fill, hit the question mark key for no fill. And right here is this little diagonal line. It's called your line segment tool. I'm just going to click on it and drag a line doesn't matter you can drag it down here okay wherever you want to go doesn't matter doesn't matter how long it is either and I'll select it with my black arrow okay to zoom in I'm gonna take my zoom tool and click a couple of times right here I can hold my space bar to move it back into view if I need to and what we're looking at is the very end of that line that is called your cap Okay, you can see on the stroke panel, you have three caps. One is called a butt cap. It butts up to the end of the anchor point. The second one is called a round cap. The black actually goes up and around the anchor point. And the third one is a pro projecting cap. It goes up, across, and back down. Okay, your default is a butt cap. You can see it's both on the uh, two first options here okay the other thing is a corner option so I'm gonna hit command key and minus a couple of times to zoom back out spacebar to move this up spacebar activates my hand tool and now I'm gonna select the star with my black arrow and we're gonna look at the corners okay caps are the ends of their lines corners are literally the corners so the first corner is called a miter join, a sharp corner. 
The middle one is a round join. It softens it up. And the third one is a bevel join. It chops it off like that. Okay, what I would recommend, and I've used this for years and years, I'm going to select everything and delete it. And anything that I draw, I click the two middle buttons. Okay, I want to show you why. I'm going to draw a cube here really quick. I'm going to start with the two simple ones, the defaults. And if I go to my rectangle, you don't have to draw this. I'm just going to draw it really quick to show you. If I start with a rectangle here, okay, and we'll make that maybe a 10. Then I'm going to start right here. Oh, let's go here. And I'll draw another rectangle that kind of butts up against it like that. With my white arrow, I can click and hit the side and then pull just that side up like that. Okay, I'll go with my rectangle again. We'll start in this corner. We'll draw a little box right there. Take my white arrow, select and hit the top edge. And then again with my white arrow, I can pull that top edge up and over. And notice what my corners look like. Okay, that one looks bad. That looks bad. And that looks bad. Okay, my corners look bad because they are projecting past each other. So what I do is everything that I draw in Illustrator. I set up my stroke panel before I ever draw, but we'll do it after I've already drawn this object and watch the corners. I always click the middle button for caps and more important, the middle button for corners. Those look a lot better. So I always draw with the two middle buttons. Keep that in mind. Okay, what you want to do at the end of a drawing, if you need to, is check your corners. Notice this corner has a little bump right there. The corners don't exactly meet. So I need to edit the way these corners meet. And edit means my white arrow. It's kind of hard to tell where the anchor points are because I'm drawing with really thick black lines. So another great feature in Illustrator is what I refer to as X-ray vision. You can hit Command Y. I would just say Y for wireframes. Okay, that is right up here. View and preview. Show me what I would get if I were to print. Command Y. Show me it in outline form, command Y. Now I can see those anchor points. I don't have to look at those thick black lines. So now with my white arrow, I can move that anchor point right there, get it right in position there, hit command Y, and now I've cleaned up that corner. Okay, so I can hold my space bar and we'll come up. That corner looks pretty good. This corner actually looks pretty good too. Command Y. I was pretty darn close on that. So that was looking pretty good there. Command Y. And Command and minus to zoom back out. So you, I wanted you to see the benefits of using the two middle buttons on your stroke panel. The last thing I'm going to talk about is a couple other buttons here on the stroke panel. And that is the align stroke. So I'm going to start with just another star right here. Really allows me to see things more clearly. I'm going to hit the up arrow next to the stroke. We'll make the stroke maybe 25. Okay, really thick outline. Notice when I zoom in on that, by default, your outlines are centered. See, it says right here, align stroke to the center. So if I pick an even number, like a 24 point stroke, 12 points are inside the star, 12 points are outside the star. Okay, it's centered along the object that you drew. That is your default. I would keep it on the default. You also have the ability to align a stroke inside. So notice how much less we see. Notice we're getting the sharp corners because it doesn't extend past them. 
here's where it's centered, here's where it's inside, and here's where it all goes outside. So you can see the difference. It affects the size of your object, centered, inside, or outside. I prefer, and I would suggest, keep it centered. You also have the ability, once you make an outline, and we'll set this, actually, let's just hit delete, and I'm gonna go back to a rectangle. Let's click and drag. So let's say I'm making the border of a coupon. I'll set that up to a 10 point stroke. Now I can click a dashed line right there. And if I don't want these looking like little pills, I click the two first buttons, a butt cap and a miter join. Okay, this says if I've got a 10 point line, I have a 12 point dash. Well, let's experiment and make that a 24 point dash and I hit return. There we go. Now I don't like the gaps in between those. So you also have a gap field. Let's type six and return. And there we go. You can design your own dashed lines. Really fun to play with. Okay, so I'm showing you some of the possibilities that are available here. You also have these two little buttons right here. Okay, if I want everything balanced, all four corners to kind of look the same, I do the one on the right. Align the dashes to corners. If I want it to truly just wrap organically, I would click that one. Of course, notice how stupid that corner looks now. This corner is different from this corner, which is different from this, and it doesn't end up looking that good. So I would always recommend if you have a dashed line, click the one on the right. Okay, the other thing you're going to want to keep in mind is typically you're going to zoom in to work on details. If you want to zoom out and see your entire page, you hit Command-0. That means fit on screen. I can hold my space bar to push this over, take my black arrow and select this, hit delete. But again, keep in mind, that is the last thing I drew and my stroke panel will remember that. So even if I try to switch to an ellipse, and I just start drawing, that's gonna be a dashed line too. Okay, your stroke panel, your fills and your strokes are always gonna remember the last thing you did. So if you don't wanna keep doing that, hit D for default colors. And then you can start again from there, okay? So I'm gonna stop this first video. We're gonna explore the stroke panel a little bit more and colors, gradients, things like that, especially gradients. So I'll see you in the next video in a few minutes.